We're now to the shocking findings of a report which suggests that about a quarter of women globally have suffered sexual or physical violence while in a relationship before they reach the age of 20. The World Health Organization estimates that 24% of women between the ages of 15 and 19 have been subjected to intimate partner violence at least once. That's close to 19 million women, with 16% reporting it in the past year. Rates were highest in Oceania, with 49% of girls in Papua New Guinea reporting incidents. Next is Africa, where the highest rate, 42%, was recorded in Democratic Republic of Congo. The lowest rate was here in Europe, with the reported cases being at about 10%. The data was based on surveys from 161 countries and areas over an 18-year period, starting in the year 2000. Well, I'm joined now by Lynn Marie Sardinia. She's a technical officer on violence against women data and research at the World Health Organization. She joins me tonight from Geneva, Switzerland. It's good to have you with us. Um, when I was reading this report, I mean, these are staggering figures. A quarter of women in a relationship subjected to violence before they reach the age of 20. You are an expert in research into violence against women. Did these numbers, did they surprise you, shock you? I think Unfortunately, um, as shocking and alarming as these numbers are, they did not come as a, a complete surprise because we know that violence against women is endemic in all countries of the world and globally. And unfortunately, younger women and adolescent girls are particularly vulnerable uh, to this violence. And I think what is also concerning about this violence starting so early is not just the short-term impacts on their, you know, educational opportunity, their health, mental and physical health, but how this has an impact throughout uh, their lives in terms of future relationships, in terms of careers, employment opportunities, but also long-term health impacts. I mean, th th there's so many things to unpack here. Um, I, I want to start by talking about the regional differences. I mean, why do we know why certain places, certain areas of the world are basically much more dangerous for girls and young women than other places? Absolutely, and I think we are we are getting, you know, more robust evidence on um, not just the individual level factors, because I think we know that violence against women is very complex and there are factors at the individual and contextual level. And what came out very strongly in the studies, as you mentioned, the wide regional differences. And one of the factors uh, that the study highlighted is the context play a role. And what we see here are that um, lower and lower middle income countries, the prevalence of this violence against adolescent girls and women is higher than some of the higher income countries. Uh, importantly, it's you know also where countries uh, where there are fewer girls in secondary education have a higher mm -hmm. prevalence rate, countries where there are unequal uh, gender laws. So for example, what we looked at was property and inherit inheritance rights. And finally, it's the practice of child marriage, uh, mm. which has the same underlying unequal gender norms and, and the prevalence there was higher. Can I also caveat this sure. by saying that um, while you know these contexts in countries like low income countries like have a higher rate, mm -hmm. we have seen shocking rates across the globe, including Europe and high yeah. income countries. So yeah. I think we all have a lot of work to do. Yeah, and I was going to ask you, too, about how, you know, the statistics are gathered. And I wonder how difficult it is to get true numbers from young, impressionable, easily manipulated young people, young, young girls, women. Is it possible that the numbers of women in this age group subjected to violence in a relationship, that those numbers could be even higher than, than what this report says? Indeed, indeed. And I think uh, this is something we uh, talk about a lot within the report and in the paper that 
the violence, especially physical and sexual violence, is highly stigmatized. Mm -hmm. And uh, hence, the numbers that we have uh, may actually be an underestimate. Uh, of course, you know, like the data that we collect is nationally representative surveys. Uh, we only include studies that used acts based measures. So, you know, we ask them if they've been hit, kicked, slapped, physically forced, uh, so basically raped. Uh, because we know that this increases the disclosure and we are trying to reduce the underestimation of the violence rather than asking, well, have you faced the violence? So, yes, uh, the stigma with this is high. Is there a recommendation for men in this study? I mean, obviously, when we talk about the violence against women, most of the time we're talking about men, but men can also play a role um, in stopping the violence. They, they also have a, a mitigating impact here. Is that discussed in this report? And what's your advice? Absolutely. Men, men and boys have a very important role to play. And because we looked at the contextual level factors, uh, one, one of the things we stress is how important it is to have uh, gender, you know, policies and programs that actually promote gender equality. But given that young women before the age of 20 are already experiencing this violence, it is very clear that these unequal gender norms and discrimination are entrenched very young. And so we advocate uh, for programs, especially early intervention and school-based programs that engage both girls and boys and community programs that engage both men and women in challenging mm. these gender norms and in teaching them about healthy relationships. Yeah, healthy, uh, healthy apart relationship. from policies that promote this, yeah. Yeah, healthy relationships um, with mutual respect. So it would be a good starting place. Absolutely. Lynn Marie Sardinia with the World Health Organization. We appreciate you taking the time to talk with us this Friday. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for having me.